Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this grade 11 chemistry tutorial, I'm going to go over the four main types of reactions that are used and how to predict the products of a reaction. Be sure to stay till the end because I'm going to show you an example many students get wrong. And if you find these tutorials helpful, please consider subscribing. All right, let's start with the first type. So a synthesis reaction. This is where we have two simple elements or molecules combine to form something more complex. For example, calcium and sulfur can combine to form calcium sulfide. All right, so let's use this idea of a synthesis reaction to predict the reaction between potassium and iodine. All right, so potassium is K, and then plus iodine, which is I. Now iodine, you have to remember, is a diatomic element, meaning it's going to always in nature form with itself. So you're going to get I2. And this is Hofbrinkel, if you recall. These are all of the diatomic elements that will form two atoms when they're by themselves. So we have hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. All right, so if these two are going to combine then in a synthesis reaction, what we need to do is look at what that equation will be. Now, if you forget how to do your nomenclature, I do have a video you can go and look because you really need to be good at your nomenclature to move forward to do these reactions. So we are actually going to get Ki. And we get that because that's an ionic compound where K is a positive one charge and iodine is a negative one charge. So we only need one of each. But then we do need to balance the equation. So we start looking at I. So we have two I's here and only one here. So we're going to need a two out in front. Never add a subscript when you're balancing equation because that changes the compound. Only put in your coefficients. So now that iodine is balanced, we need to balance potassium. So we have two here. And so we're going to add two here. So that's a synthesis reaction. Next, let's look at a decomposition reaction. This is the opposite of a synthesis reaction. If we start with something complex and it splits into simpler elements, then that is what we call a decomposition reaction. So for example, here I have ammonium chloride and it's going to split into ammonia and hydrogen chloride. So let's use this to solve the following example. So water is electrolyzed. So what happens is you have water, which is H2O, and you use electrolysis to split it. And in this case, we will split it into hydrogen and oxygen because those are both diatomic elements. They both get a two next to them. And then you have to balance. So we only have one oxygen here, but two here. So let's put a two out in front here. And then to balance the hydrogens, we'll need a two out in front there as well. All right, moving on, we're going to look at a single displacement reaction. So in this case, we have uh, something simple and then something complex. But in this complex portion, one of those parts are going to move and combine with the simple part instead. Now, this isn't always going to happen. Let's look at an example. Here we have copper and silver nitrate. And as you can see, the nitrate then moves over to be with the copper instead of the silver and we get silver by itself. Now if we were to look at this then, this wouldn't then backtrack and go to what it was before because it's not going to actually react in a single displacement reaction. So how do we know if we're going to get this switch? And to figure that out we have this activity series that we're going to look at. So in this reaction you need to ask the question, Will this nitrate leave silver to combine with copper? It's only going to do that if copper is more reactive than silver. So on our activity series, we need to look them up. So here's copper and here's silver. And this reactivity series is written in order of most reactive to least reactive. So since copper is higher on our activity series, it's more reactive than silver. And therefore, it will react with nitrate instead of silver. So it will take nitrate and we will get a reaction. Let's look at another example. 
So here we have zinc plus lead to chloride. So lead to chloride will look like this. Again, if you can't come up with that formula, check out my uh, tutorial on nomenclature. So the question becomes, will chlorine leave lead to combine with zinc? So let's look this up. Where's zinc and where's lead? Here is lead and here is zinc. So zinc is more reactive than lead. And so yes, chlorine will leave it to combine with zinc. And so we are going to get zinc chloride plus lead. And then you'd have to balance it, but in this case, it's already nicely balanced. Finally, let's move on to our double displacement reactions. So just like single displacement, but it's going to happen in both ways, like so. So here's our example. Here we have lead nitrate and potassium iodide. And you see the iodine moves to combine with the lead to give us lead iodide. And the nitrate moves to combine with the potassium. So we have potassium nitrate. Now this only happens if both your reactants are in an aqueous solution. So everything is split up into its ions. And so we are always going to write this reaction. We do not need to look up the activity series. But what we do need to do and what we're interested in is if there's going to be a precipitate formed. Now I've already written it here that our lead iodide is a solid. So that's our precipitate. But when we're solving our own example, we need to determine that ourselves. And to determine that, we're going to look at our solubility table. So if you were to double check for lead iodide, what you do is you go and look up your iodine ion, which is right here. And then it says it's soluble for most, but for lead, it is not very soluble. So if it's not very soluble, it's going to form a precipitate. Okay, so this will stay as an aqueous solution. And this one will form as a solid or precipitate if it's very low in solubility. So in this example, we have sodium nitrate, which is Na. NO3 plus ammonium chloride, which is NH4 Cl. And those will both need to be in an aqueous solution. And then what we need to do is perform our double reaction. So we're going to have nitrate come over and combine with ammonium to give us ammonium nitrate. And then we're going to have sodium combine with chlorine to give us sodium chloride. So this one actually works nicely. We don't need to balance that there, but we do need to figure out whether or not ammonium nitrate or sodium chloride is a precipitate. So let's look up ammonium nitrate. So here you have your ammonium and it looks like it's solubility with everything. So we're not going to get any precipitate from that. We're going to write aqueous and sodium chloride. So here's chlorine and I don't see sodium over here. So it is also going to be an aqueous solution. So no precipitate is formed in this double displacement reaction. All right. Now there's one special example I want to go over with you for a double displacement reaction, and that is sodium carbonate mixed with sulfuric acid. So we can do our double displacement. And so carbonate is going to combine with hydrogen. So we get H2CO3. And then sulfate will combine with sodium. We'll get Na2SO4. Now you can look these up on your solubility table to realize that they're both aqueous because they're both highly soluble. But what I want to talk about is hydrogen carbonate. So hydrogen carbonate is extremely unstable and it will quickly undergo its own decomposition reaction. So what's going to happen is you have H2CO3 decomposing into carbon dioxide and water. 
So that's a good one to remember that hydrogen carbonate will quickly decompose because it's very unstable. So we have our aqueous becoming a gas and a liquid. Now I also said at the end of this video, I'm going to give you one that many students make a mistake on, and that is this one. So when you take uh, a metal and mix it with water, a lot of students say, well, this is a single displacement reaction. Oxygen is going to come with the calcium, but that's incorrect. Now it is a single displacement reaction, but what I want you to think of water instead of H2O, I want you to think of water as a mix between a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. So your single displacement is actually your hydroxide ion moving to form with calcium. So you're going to get calcium hydroxide, which is CaOH2, which is lime water, plus our hydrogen. And remember, it's a diatomic, so you get two of those hydrogens. And then you're going to have to balance that. So two hydroxides with only one here, we're going to put a two. And then we have one calcium, one calcium, two hydrogens, and two hydrogens. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please subscribe and take a look out for the next tutorial on stoichiometry.